pesky capers, two to six gangsters robbing their boss's mansion. Calliope Games provided this copy in exchange for an honest review. You'll randomly place five room tiles face down below the getaway car. Keep the white loot bag and supply box nearby. You'll be filling the room safe very soon. Once everyone has their favor marker and character bits, you're ready to go. At the start, only two rooms will be unlocked and available. One by the oldest player and one by the youngest. Keys might be drawn during the game and they can be used to unlock other rooms. On your turn, you'll go to a room and push your luck by drawing from the safe. Each character has a unique ability that can only be used by other players. Remember those favorite tokens I mentioned at the start? Give one of those to someone to use their character's ability. Dolly Daring's means you can draw a gas card instead of rolling the danger danger die. Sergeant Spike can order other players out of a room meaning you don't have to share the loot you draw. When you draw a token, resolve it and place it on the room so everyone can see how many tokens are left. If you draw a gas token, read and resolve a gas card. Sometimes they're good and sometimes they're very bad. If you draw a coin or gem token, take the loot. Loot is split equally across all players in the room. Extra loot goes on the floor. The last player in a room gets to collect the dropped loot. If you draw a danger danger token, put it on the track. Once the final one for a room is drawn, the room automatically blows up. All players in that room lose unstashed loot and are moved to the getaway car. If it's not the final one, roll the danger danger die. A thumbs up means you're fine. Dynamite in the hand means your unstashed loot blew up and you are moved to the getaway car. Dynamite on a gem means everyone in the room's unstashed loot blew up. A big boom means the room explodes. Move everyone to the getaway car either way. If you roll Alamansky, return all unstashed loot to the supply box, plus the leftover loot on every room's floor. If you're already in a room, you can head to the getaway car to hide everything in your black stash bag. If another player is also at the car, you can pull a, Hey buddy, your favorite token is removed from the game. And you and that player split your stash 50-50. The defending player gets any odd number of gems and coins. Once all players at the getaway car refuse to head back to the mansion, or the final room blows up, the game immediately ends. Add up your loot and the winner is the one with the most. Push your luck to grab loot, but be smart. Work with each other, but remember to look out for number one. That's the Mansky Caper. After your first game, the Mansky Caper can be played in 45 to 60 minutes. More players might speed things up most of the time because you have a better chance of blowing up rooms. This game takes up a fair amount of space because of the room cards and player count. Save this for your dining room table. I think kids 8 and up will be fine with this. The game plan mechanisms are very simple. The only reading is on the gasp cards. Math is only at the end game scoring. There is literal division if you need to divide your loot with another player. I think this game could be good for teaching because there's also figuring out probabilities. If there were 14 starting tokens, 4 were danger danger and six total tokens have been pulled, three were danger danger, what's the chance of pulling the last one? If all that is too confusing, you can have fun just jumping around and pushing your luck. Our third play was disaster after disaster. Dad's first five draws spread across two rooms were danger danger tokens. Mom kept pushing her luck early on, costing her 64 points. Dad pulled a, hey buddy, on mom, and he ended up losing eight points. I drew a gas card that caused an earthquake. Because of the additional danger danger tokens, the last room was a ticking bomb. Dad, right on cue, pulled the one to destroy all of us. He lost 34 points, I lost 13, and mom lost five. 
The components are very nice. I love the room art, and I'm happy that the gems aren't just tokens. The safes are awesome and are really good for shaking loot. The symbols are very easy to learn and remember. The components come punched and separated. The rules teach you how to play in comic book form. In other words, you can just jump right into the masky caper. After one play, you can easily teach others. I absolutely love the theme. If you're worried about it, the Masky Keeper may be about gangsters, but it's not violent or anything. The Dynamite doesn't do anything worse to players other than take away your loot and or send you back to the car. The whole game is about pushing your luck. Should I stay or should I go? Should I use my favorite token? I enjoy this mechanism. Plus, it fits well. If you don't enjoy randomness, I can't see you enjoying this game at all. While you can play with two and three players, I it's not that I don't recommend it, but if it's the only way you'll play, maybe skip it. The Masky Caper has a great theme, lots of variables with the rooms, player powers, and randomness, and is a push your luck game without player elimination. It's a game kids and adults could play together, and it's a game I recommend.